whether it's a player, a team, or a coach, whoever, the biggest winner of the 2021 NFL Draft is who, Nate? The New England Patriots. Really? They got the guy that they wanted. I felt like Mac Jones was going to go out, go out a lot earlier, and he actually slid and fell into the last of the Patriots. So now you have Mac Jones in that quarterback room competing with Cam Newton. Cam Newton had moments last year when rushing the ball. He looked great. I believe he had 12 rushing touchdowns. But there were moments last year where it just looked like he didn't have what it took to get the ball to the wide receivers, whether that was the fault of his own because his arm was a little sore, banged up, or tired, or if it was the pass catchers. So now you have two legitimate quarterbacks to choose from because you were able to get Mac Jones, who is a perfect fit for your system. Talking about the Patriots, like they have a type. They have a championship type. <laughs> you know what they did in the draft? They went Alabama, yep. yeah. Alabama, uh -huh. yep. Oklahoma, yep. Oklahoma, uh -huh. Michigan. Oh, nice. <laughs> they went quarterback, D tackle, edge, running back. That's what they do. They bring in guys that can only fit the system, but they're championship quality dudes. Shout out to the Patriots for doing exactly what they were supposed to do. And just like I said at the end of last season, do not bury the Patriots yet. Mm -hmm. They will be back, and it might be this year. Didn't move up, didn't move back. Didn't have to. Just sat there and got the guy. I was surprised, and I was not surprised by the Cowboys. I was shocked. The Cowboys went all defense for the first time in the history of the franchise. Straight, six straight picks of defensive players to start the draft, highlighted by Micah Parsons. It's just, it felt like a, a mature, prudent, grown-up decision. Like, someone gets their act together. Stop playing video games and drinking Fireball all day and go get fireball. a job. And they did. Uh, Micah Parsons, look, I know this was not a big defensive draft. The guy's 245, he runs 4340. I mean, he is almost Kyle Pitsian in his athletic ability. And there's something else about Micah Parsons that is blowing my hair back. I think he's going to fit in in Dallas. Do you know that before this whole thing happened, Micah Parsons was a cameo guy. Cameo guy fetching 80 bucks a video. Wow. And this is before Dallas, before the star. Just as in terms of comp, 80 bucks a video, uh, the soup guy from Seinfeld gets also 80 bucks. So he's in that thing, and I think it's going up. I don't know how much Scott Hansen's getting these days, and I know he churns those things out. <laughs> and apparently Micah Parsons does too. He likes a little me, he likes a little buzz, and he's a linebacker running 4-3, one of six defensive players the Cowboys drafted to start. So impressed, so shocked, so proud. Cowboys fans, I think you won. It's been 26 years. I think it's about time. Yeah. <laughs> the, the soup guy. The soup guy, the soup guy, which is what we call him now. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going there, Peter. Are you kidding? Me? <laughs> Absolutely shouldn't. No soup for you. Um, <laughs> all right, so the Bears have a GM, Ryan Pace. He's been there for five years, and for the last three years, every single morning he wakes up, he probably goes in, gets a workout, turns on the local radio, and hears from the fact that he's the guy who drafted Mitchell Trubisky over Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. and Deshaun Watson. Mm -hmm. It has been his legacy. And around January, George McCaskey, the team president, came out and said, we're bringing Ryan Pace back. And the the feelings around the Chicago market was, why? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why are we doing this? Okay, well, you have one more offseason. Let's see what you can do. They go hard after Russell Wilson. Aggressive. They offer a, a legitimate offer. They're hitting the ground running. They're trying to get Russell Wilson. They don't get Russell Wilson. So what do the Bears do? They go and they trade up for Justin Fields. Big move. And not only do they trade up for Justin Fields, they trade next year's first round pick. Ryan Pace takes a big swing. Ryan Pace has a new lease on life in Chicago. If this hits, that stuff doesn't matter. That stuff is in yesterday, that stuff is rear view mirror. And I wanna bring up that screen you just saw because now the, the conversation on Ryan Pace is a little differently. Mm -hmm. If Justin Fields is a star quarterback, then you start looking at Ryan, uh, Ryan Pace's draft picks on days two and day sure, three. Sure, let's see them. And you see what you get. Can we see that screen again that was brought up earlier? Um, a little too early. Can we? There here we go. go. All right, here it is. Eddie Goldman starts. Cody Whitehair starts. James Daniels starts. Cole Komet is going to start. Jalen mm -hmm. Johnson was a great as a rookie. David Montgomery, their best running back. Eddie Jackson, Tariq Cohen. That's great. Darno Mooney. That is a loaded, hey, look what I do on days two and three. Any other GM, you no look one at that talks list, about this. you say, that is a yeah. really good job from the GM. But because he took Trubisky, mm -hmm. that never got to that conversation. Yeah. Now he's the guy <laughs> who traded up to get Fields, and maybe we can look at it a little differently. I'm being a Pollyanna here on a Monday. I love it. Bears fans wanted him out. He got back in thing, and then he used his swing, and he went and got this guy. If Justin Fields is great, and Justin Fields is the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears for the next 10 years, Ryan Pace will be the GM for the next 10 years. <laughs> what if... Um 
What if Mac Jones becomes the next Tom Brady? <laughs> if he trades up again yeah. and passes on another generational talent, yeah, I'm just Ryan Pace, you. we love you. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. Yeah. It might. Who knows? Here's so. hoping. At GMFB. How about the Jets, Shriggs? Because I feel like that we always as a sports media group, especially here in New York, after a Jets draft, can poke holes in something. I feel like there's very little to rip apart here after what they did. They got their quarterback of the future in Zach Wilson. They got Elijah Moore, a very respectable wide receiver talent. And you look at what else they got beefing up the O-line for him. Elijah Vera Tucker, that was their second first-round pick. Playmaker, dynamic running back, too. Uh, he's shifty and he's explosive. His name's Michael Carter out of North Carolina. I don't know if any team's roster made as dramatic of a transformation as this Jets team, and I'm actually really excited about it. There's no holes to poke. I'm sorry, Daily News. <laughs> Here's the deal. They had Sam Darnold and never gave him any of the weapons. What do the Jets do with their first four picks in this draft? Offense, Shop offense, it. offense. Elijah Moore is a speedster. Jo uh, you know, Michael Carter is going to be great for North Carolina. I'm Again, excited. And then day three, okay? Robert Sala's like, I'm a defensive coach. They went six picks in a row. Defense, defense, really? defense, 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 mm -hmm, defense. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. everyone was happy walking out of that room. And if Zach Wilson's good, we've got a story here on Good mm -hmm. Morning Football every morning because it'll be lighting up New York City. Congrats to Robert Sala, to Joe Douglas on a really well-executed draft uh, in offseason. All right, more Good Morning Football, of course, on the way. But uh, we got Ron Rivera on mm -hmm. the show. We're excited about that. And Darius Leonard talking I, about some I, cool I, stuff. I, I want to bring up one thing. Nate, what do you got? super excited about Mac Jones. I am. I'm curious because in the oh, pre-draft process, I, you were not the biggest draft Mac Jones guy, but now you like the fit. No, no. You were saying that Mac Jones was going to land in San Francisco. And knowing Kyle Shanahan a little bit, I just thought he he – would transition out of Jimmy Garoppolo to a guy that's different than Jimmy Garoppolo. And he did. And yeah. He did. A lot different. I felt like Mac Jones is the perfect fit for the Patriots. That's why I keep talking about these draft picks. That they landed where they were supposed to land. I, even Zach Wilson is a good fit here in New York. I truly do believe that. Mm. We knew where Trevor Lawrence was going. Justin Fields to Chicago got everybody excited. Najee to the Steelers. Uh, Jamar Chase going, sure. playing with Joe Burrow. Like all of these different players went to places that fit them. Nate, you're and also a huge Cam Newton guy. I am. So how do you reconcile that with a perfect fit? How do you think that thing shakes? Welcome to the summer. I believe this is great. Yeah, and welcome to Good Morning Football. Hello. We've been talking about this for a while. I believe this is great. It's great for open competition because we don't usually have that. Coaches will say one guy is the starter um, and, and we're going to compete. Yeah. But really, they already know who their guy Belichick is. Belichick said Cam's the guy. Yeah. Cam's the guy. But if Cam doesn't play well mm -hmm. or he can't throw the ball as well as Mac Jones, Mac Jones will play this year. This isn't one of those things where Cam gets pulled and then we know he's going to be starting next week. If Cam gets <coughs> pulled and he sits down on the bench for the Patriots, that will be the last time yeah. he plays as a Patriot. It's a very period. curious quote by Bill Belichick. He never has to answer anything ever. He decides to answer that because he's supportive of Cam or because he wants to light a fire under Mac Jones to take that starting gig.